Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I was just working on some stuff for the magazine and listening to some praise and worship music and I know a few seconds ago it's at 12:27, so I thought I had three whole minutes looked again it's at 12:30, so I'm like oh boy we cannot be late but that is the joy of the Lord for today you know just working and listening to praise and worship music allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us as we are working uh, strategically in our next publication for Hope and Truth magazine. Uh, before we go any further, I want to remind you that we will have our virtual writing workshop on September the 16th. I cannot tell you how much I do apologize for the interruption of having it on September the 2nd, which was our first session. Uh, out of my control totally but my flight was canceled in Florida and so I did not arrive back in New Jersey until Saturday evening I am back sitting at my desk with the two monitors in front of me and I uh, just working 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 and so once again I do apologize but we will have virtual writing workshop on September the 16th at 12 o'clock p.m. sharing with you here live via our radio broadcast program and and we will have a video available for you as well. We are going to discuss taking your expertise, your writing, your teaching, and putting it into workbook format. We will talk about extracting information from your uh, writing to create questions out of them and to put them in your workbook. We are also going to talk about how to make a companion journal for your workbooks. This is residual income for each and every one of you. And as a bonus for those who go ahead and complete a workbook, we will provide you with advertisement for free in Hope and Truth magazine, as well as we will mention your uh, product here on our radio broadcast program. All you have to do is email us today at thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com and we'll take care of the rest. All right, let's get into this word because, listen to God be the glory, I am so excited. Can you hear it in my voice? I am so excited. I want to just share with you that at some point in our lives, we should get to a place that says I surrender all that's right we should get to a place in our lives that we say I surrender all everything I, I'm not just the good stuff I don't want to just surrender my all when things are going good uh, I want to surrender my all in all things. I don't want to just surrender uh, my gifts and my talents. I want to surrender everything that I have unto my Father which is in heaven. I want to surrender all. My attitude. Mm -hmm. Yep, you didn't see that one coming. Uh, my thought process. The way that I perceive things. Uh, my conversation, where I'm going, the intentions of my heart. I want to surrender it all. I need to take it out of my hands. Have you ever thought about that? I need to take my life out of my hands and put it in the hands of my Father which is in heaven. I am at the tender beautiful age of 50, not ashamed to say it, and I have seen some areas in my life that Angel just got in the way and I did it my way and it was temporary or it didn't work out at all and so I'm sitting here today and, and let me tell you this morning um, creating some uh, photo lineup and I want to do it one way yes I do I want to do it one way but I'm like you know what let's just surrender Holy Spirit show me how to do this Holy Spirit, you tell me how to do this. I surrender all. I send, surrender my all to the will of the Father today. And that is my prayer. That is my desire today to just surrender 
just surrender yeah listen i i don't want to fight against what god has for me i don't want to cause anything on my behalf to um I don't want it to get in the way not at all so I want to surrender all we are going to take a look at the word over in Jeremiah the 18th chapter this is the area of surrendering all but before we read the Word of God let's read our morning inspiration for today actually popped up on my screen for memories we wrote this seven years ago for Hope and Truth magazine. It is entitled Love, Light, and Oneness. The length of a life is not determined by years, months, weeks, days, hours, minutes, or seconds, but by experiences. Live without measure through dreams unlimited, pursuing with a purpose. Author Angel Ferguson. So seven years ago, that popped up in my memories on today and we use that for our morning inspiration just want to share with you and inspire you in the will and work of the Lord that is our only desire and you know what I was sending a message to uh, our ministry one of our outreach ministries and uh, in its sisters in unity and just writing to them because as I was writing some stuff this morning the Holy Spirit's just really talking to me and uh, I had to edit some things so I put some things in place and it just didn't look right to me okay and so I'm like today let's edit it let's get it right because whatever we do for the kingdom of heaven which Hope and Truth magazine is designed for the kingdom of heaven so I want it done right I want it done excellent okay and so I decided today, you know what, let's get this done. Let's edit this. That's what we need to do. And uh, so I, I wrote to Sisters in Unity, and, and I can share with you what I wrote to them. It says, greeting my beautiful sisters. Don't be afraid of hitting the edit button in your life so that you can live in abundance. So as I wrote that, something shifted in my spirit. So I said to them, those words just shifted for me. As I am reminded once again, the way this is done spiritually has already been explained in Jeremiah 18, 1 through 6. Let God shape and remold us for the greater. So I had already given our title for today, which was, I Surrender All. And so, how do we do that? Let's look in the Word of God. Let's go to Jeremiah 18, beginning at the first verse. It says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. We are the clay. And we are shaped and molded through Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit helps us in our infirmities, which are weaknesses, which are inabilities that we, we don't even know about. But to allow the Father to shape and to mold us for greater is how we surrender all spiritually. We can go through the process of redoing our hair and updating our wardrobe or even changing it and all of those things that's physicality I'm talking about a spiritual surrender when we do it spiritually it overflows into the natural and so what I desire this is my desire is that I put myself in God's hands that I surrender all everything about me the total being of Angel Ferguson 
that I know that as I place myself in his hands, I am surrendering so that he can break me mm -hmm. from tradition, from my ideals, from my ways, from words that were spoken over me that were not a part of his plan, from low self-esteem because of what I heard, of what I saw, and what I thought. Those things that speak and think contrary to the way that he sees me, and in some way, shape, or form, I did take those things, and I lived them. I let the thoughts marinate in my mind that, hey, I'm not good enough, but that is a lie from the pits of hell. I want him to break that from me. I want him to remove that from me. I want that lifted from me. The thought that says that, uh, once again, you're not good enough, uh, uh, you can't do this, and or that nobody loves you, nobody wants you, uh, those things need to be pulled and extracted from us. They were embedded in our minds, sometimes in our bloodstream, and every now and then they surface. Whenever you get to a certain point, part in your life there goes that ugly nasty reminder and I want it removed I want it broken from me and so I say I surrender all I want to become that clay that he can break it says here that the vessel that he made of clay was marred in his hand, which means he broke it now. It, it didn't serve the right purpose. It wasn't good enough. It wasn't made in the right image. And so he sh reshaped it. He broke it down. That's surrendering all. Break me from myself. Remove me from myself. I want to see me through God's eyes. And when we see ourselves through God's eyes, it's not always pretty because there are some things that need to be removed. There are some things that need to be destroyed from our life. Not just broken, because broken things can be put back together. I want it destroyed because I do not want anything that's not of him I don't want it to have an opportunity to come back together I don't want it to have an opportunity to connect with something else that was broken and then you have this big mass of a bunch of broken pieces mm -mm. I want it destroyed I want it destroyed from my life and so I surrender all I surrender all and it's not just in words it's in deeds and the way that we do that once again is through the Word of God we do that through the Word of God look at my life am I living my life according to the will of God am I living my life that is pleasing in his sight am I in the way Am I hindering my next? Am I sabotaging my breakthrough? Oh, come on. I must take accountability that perhaps I might just be in the way. And so that his way is clear because his way is perfect. I'm willing to say, you know what? Let's go to the potter's house. The shaping and the molding. How he, from the beginning of time, he said, let us make man in our image. That's the image I want to be made in. In the image of God. And, and I know somebody might say, well, yes, Adam was made in the image of God and then Adam fell short and Adam sinned. He actually did. But the way through that is we should have a repentive heart. 
and keeping a mindset of let me follow after righteousness let me follow after the things of God let me give heed to the voice of God which is the Spirit of the Lord which is the Holy Spirit because he warns me before I sin and even when I do he convicts me now that's good before I do something he's already warning me that's not a good decision don't go there don't say that that's not a good thought and when I override him when I do it anyway he convicts me so what about you today have you gotten to that place that you know what I, I just I just surrender I'm not giving in to defeat I'm giving up to victory I'm not defeated I'm not without I just want to do it God's way I don't want to please my flesh I'm not interested in pleasing man or others I want to please God I want to do things in such a way that it exemplifies and it glorifies him and him alone that when you see anything that I put my hands to do, that you will know without a shadow of a doubt that, hey, that is the work of the Lord. Oh, that's God all over that. Oh, that, that ain't nothing but the Lord all over that. That's what I want. That's what I want. I no longer want you to see me, but I want you to see the Christ that dwells within me. So I have to surrender all. And in surrendering all means that I, I got to give up some stuff. I have to give up some things. Yes, I do. Oh, my goodness. I have to give up some things. Is that going to be easy? No, but I'm willing to make the sacrifice mm -hmm. for eternal life. I'm willing to make the sacrifice so that others may see Christ in me so that someone else will be drawn to the love of Christ that someone else will one day give their life surrender ask Jesus to come in to be their Lord and Savior I'm willing to surrender it all because it's not about me it is about our Father which is in heaven it is about his son Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior that is what it's all about and sometimes we just have to get to that point and say you know what I throw my hands up I lift my hands I lift my hands I lift my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help and I submit myself as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto you which is my reasonable sacrifice I surrender all I surrender all I surrender what I thought I surrender what I believed I I surrender it all I surrender everything about me I need you to search my heart and to try my thoughts I need you to reveal those things that are not pleasing in your sight I need you to uproot and destroy the traditions that don't line up with your will in my life that's what I need today and I am seeking you with everything that is within me that is my earnest prayer today that is my desire that I surrender all that I put myself in the hands of my father which is in heaven and I allow, see, surrendering all says that I give God permission all to lead and guide me by the Holy Spirit. I give Jesus Christ permission to be my Lord and Savior. That is surrendering all. I give him permission to lead me. You see, what I am learning in when it comes to leadership, that we can have a leader there. But we have to give him permission to lead us. 
give him permission to guide you. When you know where you are going, then you can say, okay, I can follow along with this. But when you don't have any clarity, when you don't have any understanding, you have no idea where you're going. I can't follow where I don't know where I'm going. And I don't like merry-go-rounds. I can look at them for so long, but I'm not a fan of merry-go-rounds. I think they're pretty with all the lights and all that other stuff. And all in my younger days, I've gotten on one or two. I would never repeat a ride. You know, some people get on and off at the rides at the fair. Mm -mm, not me. I'm not fond of ready uh, merry-go-rounds. I'm really not. I want to. I want to be led. And I am a leader. And so. For those, just like with Jesus, Jesus said to God that he gave him those disciples. As leaders, we are given a certain audience to lead. And I want to lead well. And I'm heading towards eternal life in heaven. And if you are one who have followed and been a part of the balance of life or Angel Ferguson Ministries, College of Ministry and Mentoring, that's where we're headed. We're headed to do that which is right for the kingdom of heaven. We are headed towards praying for one another that we may be healed interceding on behalf of others that's where we're headed because we want the captive set free we want the the bondage of sin to be broken and destroyed not just broken we want it destroyed we want the yoke of bondage of sin to be destroyed we want strongholds to be identified and destroyed we want lives to be changed we want individuals to grow in their faith because without faith it is impossible to please God we want you to know the love of Christ we want you to know that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him and that yes there is a purpose for you upon the earth yes you have been gifted with spiritual gifts and talents for the kingdom of heaven. Yes, you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. That's where we're headed. That's where we're headed. Building the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is in heaven. That's where we're headed. That's where we're headed. Oh, that someone's mind may be transformed and renewed by the word of God. That's where we are headed. That's where we are headed. And in order for us to do that, our mindset is, Lord, I surrender all. I surrender all. Let's read some more of this word because it's just good. It's just absolutely good. Jeremiah 18. We are now at the fifth verse. It says, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, so remember, God told him to go to the potter's house and there he would allow him to hear a word he said I will cause thee to hear my words now he saw a thing and here comes the explanation see whenever God shows us something he gives an explanation explanation behind it he never just reveals something and leaves us there and so just as sure as he allows you to see something then yes Wait patiently because he will explain what it is that you saw. It says, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, say of the Lord? Behold, as the day is in the potter's hand, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. All right. So, what God is saying, just like just like with the with the clay, God can do that with us. God can do that with you if you let him. 
if you let him. Also, another great word is God asks a question where he says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Do you believe that God will do a new thing? Mm-hmm. He said, I'll do a new thing. That's over in the book of Isaiah. I'll do a new thing. So, let him shape and mold you. Just like with the clay, he made a new thing. Over in Isaiah 43, let's look at Isaiah 43. Because I want to encourage you today. It's okay if you have to start over. It's okay if we started out on a way and an idea that we thought is good. You might have skipped asking God. Just repent and ask him what, ask God about his way of doing things. He said he'll do a new thing. He also said, we just read it over in Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, first through the sixth verse, that he can take something that was made and remake it. Do not be afraid to hit that edit button. Do not be afraid to go back and revise something. Listen, you, you've put it out there. Uh, you, you've written it up. It needs to be revised. Don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid. Do it God's way. It's better to do it God's way. It's better to, for us to admit that, you know what? This this just this just isn't lining up to the way that it exemplifies God. My life has to show his presence. And it's okay if we thought our way was, hey, the right way. It's okay. But when the Holy Spirit reveals to us that God has a better way, that what we did put out there was not what God wanted us to put out there, only thing you have to do, and listen, you don't owe an explanation to nobody. Let me say that. We don't owe an explanation to anybody. Our obligation is to please God. So if you put something out there, I'm saying this because I, I want to help many of us. If you started to do something and you did not consult God, simply repent. Because something within your spirit is going to let you know that's, that's not good. That's, that's not top notch. Don't throw anything together for the sake of saying you put something together. Don't do that. Mm -mm, don't do that. Consult God. If you didn't, repent. Get back on course. Let's take a look at Isaiah 43. 43 and 19. It says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Let's back up. 15 says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Because I'll do a new thing. It's not about tradition. It's about being led by God. And the only way we're truly going to be led by God. Is we must get to a point in our lives to say. I surrender all. I need you to break this in me. Break it in me. If it's not pleasing to your will, if it's not of your will, if it's not in your way, God, break that thing in me because I want to do things that are pleasing in your sight. I want to move in liberty. I want to have what you want from my life. 
And in order for that to happen, I must surrender all. We're coming to a close on today. To God be the glory you are in my thoughts and in my prayers. Continuing to pray for you that you too can get into that place and say, you know what? I just surrender all to you, Father, because you are my creator, which is in heaven. You made me and fashioned me and you know all about me. You know what you want me to be. Have a blessed day, everyone, in the Lord.